Hello again and welcome back to Emotionally Speaking. I've had a question about trauma. How to basically get over it and how to deal with the intense emotions that arise in response to trauma. Now I look at trauma in a very different way than many people do. My feeling about emotions is that they arise specifically to help. Even if they're painful and powerful, they have a purpose and they have a wisdom of their own. So what, what do we see, what emotions do we see arising after trauma? Panic and panic attacks. And panic is the life-saving emotion that helps you fight, flee, or freeze uh, in instances where your life is in danger. So that is a very helpful emotion when a trauma is occurring. They may help you freeze so that you can just get through it. Um, you know, sort of, they can help you flee. Like, actually, when I was being uh, abused when I was a child, I would leave. I would completely dissociate, so I wasn't even available. Um, it became a problem because throughout my childhood, I dissociated as a matter of course, and there are entire swaths of my childhood I don't remember. Um, there, I don't remember, there's a lot of things I don't remember up until my 20s when my son was born, and then he provided an anchor for me to remember uh, better and to remain um, focused and not dissociate because he needed me, right? But um, up until he was born, um, uh, I could have been anywhere. But it was an extremely important thing to do when I was being molested because it was too much, uh, it was too much for me as a little person. I think I was three. And uh, so I give great thanks to my capacity for dissociation. I have learned how to integrate and how not to dissociate. But when I need to, I can dissociate like that. It's great. It's a skill, right? Even though it came from a very rough uh, and ugly place. Another emotion you're going to see is rage, right? And rage is a powerful form of anger. Anger is about setting boundaries. And so rage sets boundaries with fire, right? It sets boundaries with like knives coming out of them, but it is trying to set boundaries. So we welcome the rage, even though it's uncomfortable, and understand what it's trying to do. Now, in a situation of healing from trauma, you're probably going to need help. And the best help that I have found is from a man named Peter Levine, Dr. Peter Levine, who has who is a somatic psychologist, and he has created a, a trauma healing modality called somatic experiencing. And unlike any other modality that I have experienced, there may be others, but these are the ones I know of, Dr. Levine teaches people to treat the emotions and the responses as aspects of your genius and nothing to shut down or erase or move away or stop. Rather, he has you calmly kind of go back to, if you're having flashbacks, go back to the situation safely, not to re-traumatize you, not to go over and over and over it, because don't ever do that. Don't let anybody have you go over and over and over a trauma by recounting it, because memory is a very imperfect thing, and your memories will change, and you may be making it worse each time you remember it. So, mm -mm, no recounting. That one I'm going to say no to. But he helps you go into the feeling sense of it, and then come safely out, and go see what was happening safely out, not re-traumatizing re yourself, not recounting, not picking at the wound, but finding the strength in each of your responses. For me, this was a, this was a life-changing event, finding his work. And um, I'll put a link to uh, the Somatic Experiencing site underneath this video. But I also want to put a link to videos on the strong emotions that you will feel um, in many cases. Uh, as you heal your traumatic experiences. So there's panic, um, there's anger slash rage, um, depression, right? Because depression is an emotion that comes up to say something is wrong and we're not letting you go forward until this wrong thing is dealt with, right? Depression is very helpful in that way. <laughs> yeah, great. It's like your best friend who's annoying. Um, so you look at depression, 
why would you be stopped from moving forward? Well, if you're going forward on the steam of, of things you learned to do when you were traumatized, like um, uh, sidle up to dangerous people or dissociate at will or allow yourself to be abused, right? Your psyche knows that that's no fun, right? That's not how that's going to work. And so it may stop you with this kind of energy of depression. Another one that may come up is the suicidal urge. And it certainly did for me. I had my first suicidal urge, suicidal episode when I was 10. And for children who are sexually abused, in many cases they may kind of do well, but as their hormonal lives start to occur, you know, in puberty, um, all that kind of sexual garbage comes back out. And so that, that was true for me. And I became very suicidal just episodically and very dissociated, right? If you look at that as we want everybody to be peaceful and loving and happy and healthy at all times, you would say Carla was a very, very sick 10-year-old. But I look at it now as look at my suicide urge coming up. And what suicide says is give me liberty or give me death. Now the rule in dynamic emotional integration and in my work and in my book, The Language of Emotions, the rule is um, this is off the table in talks of suicide. I'm not killing myself. I turn out and say what needs to be killed. And my suicidal urge and the, the wisdom and the brilliance it brings will help me see exactly and specifically and precisely what is wrong and what happened to me. And so Understanding these emotions and what their purpose is and what brilliance and what wisdom they bring, you can heal from trauma, right? I don't want to use myself as, as an exemplar uh, because then that's just one person, but I look back on my childhood and I should not have had a very good outcome. Um, it was a lot of abuse and a lot of trouble and a lot of um, mental illness. Um, but by going into the emotions, rather than trying to make everything nice and never having, never feeling as if I was molested or abused and never feeling as if I had intense emotions, that would have led me nowhere. But by going into the emotions, by listening to each of them carefully, and learning my skills in grounding, in setting my boundaries, in focusing myself, in learning how to burn contracts, which is one of the um, skills that I teach, in understanding how to rejuvenate myself and fill myself with things I wanted rather than things that were just sort of put on me. I was able to rebuild a life, not from scratch, but from the wisdom that already lived inside me. So yes, trauma is seriously bad, right? But it's not a life sentence. And by going into the emotions, you can come out the other side as not a trauma victim, but as sort of um, a tempered person who can now stand up and speak to trauma in a way that very few people can understanding the position of the abuser, understanding the, the needs of people who are violent, understanding trouble in the world, and not being knocked down by it, but understanding it and knowing it because you've lived it in yourself with the rages, with the suicide urge, with panic, with terror, right, with depression. You've known the depths of the human soul. And you've come out and you can dance again. Right. In the language of emotions, there is a chapter called The Role of Emotions in the Resolution of Trauma. And when you can resolve your trauma and understand, I am now a member, I'm an elder of the tribe of people who were molested in childhood, or the tribe of people who were abused in childhood, or the tribe of people who grew up in a cult, or the tribe of people who were abused in marriage, or the tribe of people who were homeless, right? I'm an elder in that tribe. I'm no longer carrying scars everywhere that are open and bleeding. I got some nice scars, 
but they're healed over. And I can move forward in my life, understanding that it's my strong emotions were not the problem. They were the solution. Emotionally speaking, if you have had trauma in your life, I'm going to say something. Don't let anybody erase your emotions. They will lead you into and out of the trauma in a way that will not only save your life, but deepen it and make it richer and more connected to the reality of human nature, which is as horrific and violent as it is beautiful and creative. Emotionally speaking, if you listen to your emotions and trust them, you may need some help, right? You've got this. From your tribal elder, I say thank you. Bye-bye.